Um, and with that, I would like to um, bring back to the stage, we had Stefan Swanepoel, he's gonna moderate our last session called Deep Dive with Big Data. So if you will all join me, this is gonna be really cool. I think it's kind of tying all the piece, pieces and parts together of what's actually happening with this technology today, how it interacts with, your, with the MLS and the search. So if you will help me welcome them to the stage for Deep Dive with Big Data. Thank you for having me back. I hope you had a fun ride this morning. Let's please join me on the stage here. I'm Not gonna move yet. my chair because it's all about you guys, not about me now. You're in the hot seat. Uh, CMLS put this panel together for you and the intention was that we were going to take a deep dive into big data. As you heard this morning, one of the sessions which we spoke about was the importance of big data and how it could play a role. We also had one or two speakers reference it yesterday. So here we have two, three vendors that are gonna share with us certain ideas about how they are using big data, how their products and services can be done. So they're here not by their own choice. This is not a marketing exercise. This is us selecting three companies as examples of how big data could be used, maybe in a more non-traditional kind of a way, maybe more innovative way, a larger way than what we've normally looked at. And then we've asked Tim to join us at the end. He's gonna be my reality check. <laughs> so every time we have a a potential innovative vendor here, and we're gonna ask them, uh, what's your product? How does it look like? How does it work? What does it do? Do you think it's gonna change the world? We're gonna say, and Tim, do you agree with that? Does it work for the MLS? So I'll ke keep them, let's keep them real, right? We don't want them to go too far off the reservation. But you can be creative, so why don't we start? We're gonna ask you each to introduce yourself. So Kevin, you're with Inrex. I remember I met you, what was it, about three years ago three or so? Three years now, yeah. And uh, it was also in Las Vegas. Exactly. It was at a T3 summit. So yeah. uh, tell the audience who you are, what your company is, and I think I associate you with drive time because yeah. you and I, had, that was our first discussion. So tell us what's drive time as well, all the other sure. stuff. So uh, thanks for having us. Uh, Kevin Foreman, Enrix. We're a 500 person company based in Seattle. Uh, our, we're sort of known for tracking the GPS signals of 275 million drivers. Oh, uh, repeat number. 275 million drivers. That's like everybody in the state. In 45 countries. Wow, okay, um, big number and we get about a trillion data points a day. Oh. So it's a lot of big data. And the good news for the audience, big data doesn't matter. It's information and insight you get from big data. And in this industry, we do drive time to work. So homeowners can say, show me all the homes between X and Y price within Z minus drive time of my office so they don't have to guess. Or worse yet, drive house A on Monday morning, house B on Tuesday morning, house C on Wednesday morning, which is silly for all sorts of reasons. For example, Wednesday might not be typical because there might be an accident on the road, and why would you add five days to your sales cycle? Um, and uh, really enjoyed the industry so far. Uh, we've got about, I think, 12 MLSs live through our partnership through Core Matrix, and, or Core Logic Matrix, and HomeSpotter, as well as about 100 brokerages through numerous partnerships. So uh, it's been fun. It's three years. It has gone by fast because technology takes time, change is hard. Um, but it's nice to take data and take the guesswork out of finding the homes based on searching for drive time. Wonderful. So big data means something else to all of us, right? For me, I just get I just get boggled when he says a mil what a billion a trillion data points a, a day. trillion, and that's what uh, twelve zeros. It's a lot of data. Okay, so billion nine zeros, twelve zeros, bigger than your telephone code number with all all of the extensions <laughs> onto it. <laughs> is that's a lot of data which gets to be crunched, and and we just as normal people, normal companies, we can't digest, we don't understand. You got to help us make sense of that. Thank you very much, Krishna Malala. We met. What was it? Four years ago, yeah. you were yep. previously with Citibank, I believe. That's right. And then you decided to venture on your own, and I associate you with TLC, True Lifestyle Cost. Yep, that's correct. And you have like a TLC calculator or something. Tell us, tell us a little bit about you and your company. <laughs> that, that's right. Um, so uh, I'm Krishna Moyala, and thanks so much for everyone uh, at CMLS for bringing us on board. Uh, uh, one of the biggest things when I was searching for a home, I actually had three primary questions when I was asking my real estate agent. I wanted to know exactly what you just said. How long is my commute? Right, it's really critical. I wanted to know, can I actually afford it? And what does that mean? And then what is my lifestyle once I actually move there? And so when I was looking at all this stuff, I saw two houses that were both priced $500,000. But when I went to the bottom, they were uh, priced, one had $8,000 in taxes, the other one had $13,000 in taxes. And I was like, why are we searching based on beds, bats, and crunch? What I really wanted to know is, how much can I actually afford? And we saw all these talks about siloed information, right? And what we've done at TLC Engine is taken multiple data points from the state, federal, and local level and integrate that in to ask the simple question, what does this house mean to me? 
So taking up the three largest costs, uh, your, uh, your mortgage, your commute, your um, utility costs, and actually using AI to predict all of those costs. Because at the end of the day, as, uh, as we spoke earlier, uh, is that you know, we're changed the, the drive miles to minutes. But I think at the end of the day, people are saying, how much money will I actually have left over? We've become a subscription service uh, entity. And I think that the big thing that people really want to know is how much money will I actually have left over? And we've created a search platform that allows you to search based on that monthly payment and knowing and understanding your lifestyle. So all of those in integrated into a single platform. So it fits great with this morning's talk, right? He used a few letters there, AI, artificial intelligence. Remember, that was, that was one of the ones on our list this morning. So using some of the tools that are currently available that were not available a decade ago or a decade and a half ago. Duke, I haven't met you as many times. I think we've met once before, but I know your partner, Andrew Fletcher from yes. Real Scout, and uh, he's at a wedding today, I believe. But we had a good webinar some while back, and I was fascinated by machine learning. So tell us who you are to the company, and then what the hell is machine learning? Sure. Uh, my name is Duke Fan. I'm head of product for Real Scout. We are a 30-person startup in Mountain View. We're basically surrounded by all the Google buildings. Uh, so we see self-driving cars every day zipping past us. Um, we provide a, a home search experience and listing alerts experience for agents to use with their home buyers. And of course, we do this by uh, act, uh, relying on the MLS for the data. And so by doing that, we take our stewardship of that data super seriously. But there are things that home buyers want to know that aren't in that data. Right? And so when they need that, we've actually gone out of our way to find and enhance it with those things. Uh, and so one of the big things is photos. Right? The, the, they they want to find things out of those photos. Uh, so we spent some time um, extracting that information out. Right? Uh, and so once we got to about two, three million photos by hand, uh, it got a little bit repetitive and tiring. <laughs> So we figured we could teach computers to do that. And so that's where we started investing in machine learning about two years ago. Um, so with that, you know, now we're able to do 26 million plus photos and have the machine do it at even a better accuracy than the people who originally did it. Um, and so and that's just the first step. I mean, the machine learning, we applied it now to photos. <coughs> and you probably saw some of the cool things in your, in your webinar for that. Um, but on top of that, there's other things we can do too. So with all the buyer data we're collecting, uh, we want to use that same machine learning to do a better job predicting what home buyers would want to see next, predicting what is hot in that market predicting when a home, uh, when a buyer actually um, uh, would purchase a home and what they're going to purchase. Because we think we've seen a lot of cool machine learning from other companies where they take sold data, um, and they're probably asking you for that data, uh, and they're taking that data and they're trying to figure out what the home will sell for. Um, and we can take the same experience, we want to do that with the home buyer activity and predict what the buyers are going to do, predict what the, which buyer is going to transact and on which house. So you're extracting information from photos, what kind of information? Um, mostly what you know, people want to see in the photos isn't described in the photo. Occasionally there's captions, but that doesn't describe what's actually in it, what features are in it, whether the photo is a high ceiling, natural light, large backyard, cool. hardwood floors, whatever might be in it. Right? Uh, sometimes the listing has a description, but it's not tied to the photo, which is what the person's trying to find. So what happens is the, 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 the home buyer is just flipping through 30, 40 yeah. photos like a TV channel and just trying to get there as fast as they can, and then, oh, oh go back up, where's the kitchen? Um, that's so much easier if you just, like, you know, grab the words right out of the photo and categorize it for them. Great, great. Tim, I met you when you were with the association, before you were with the association, which you're now with the association. Right. You're now the CTO for the Austin Board of Realtors, right? Good enough. Good enough, good enough. Uh, tell us about, about uh, the board and yourself. So, uh, Austin Board of Realtors, I think uh, uh, Paul went out and heavily recruited somebody that kind of, to pat myself on the back, I guess, understood the industry and maybe more importantly than running day-to-day -day operations, which I have a, a really qualified guy named Stan Martin that does that, but just to, uh, to think, to brainstorm, to um, evolve their MLS, to try and build the best MLS classes all of you in the room do every day. So uh, I think they've taken a lot of chances. Um, somebody on stage, Lauren Hill, yesterday mentioned that the industry should find a way to deliver data to developers so that they can develop the next thing. Well. We announced on stage at Reso in spring that we were going to do that, and in the fall we'll, we'll actually launch that. Between CoreLogic being uh, generous to donate a Trestle server, Austin generous enough to donate year-old data to that server, and Reso being the host where a lot of developers hit, there'll be a reference server available that any two guys in a garage can get access to under simple terms of use, and we get some insight into where the industry and where these guys are going and where they're thinking before they even approach anybody. So. Um, up to our challenge, if you want to do that, approach CoreLogic and Reso and see if you can join in and donate your data to that server. So 
All right, let me ask you your opinion. Let's start on that side, working back. Have you heard about machine learning? Have you heard about Real Scout? And, and how, how, does that, how does machine learning even fit into the MLA? So I have, and I'm a super geek when it comes to that stuff. Like I go out and seek out projects, like the array of things in Chicago. If you haven't seen it, go Google that. But uh, I don't know that machine learning has to fit. It doesn't have to be in the MLS, right? These guys do a good enough job. Um, we don't have the development resources. We don't have that kind of staff. I think is to steal from Rob Hahn, too many, uh, too poor, too small, right? I don't have a team of developers sitting there. So I think our job is going to be one of integration, right? It's going to be one of being able to look at these guys and tell whether or not they're a fad, a gimmick, or, or they have staying power, right? So if you look back, I think a lot of people would have called this estimate a gimmick, right? Now it's probably one of the most brilliant marketing ploys and has changed consumer behavior and how they ask their qu realtors questions. I think each one of these guys have that ability too. Um, it's our job to decide which ones are right for us. And do you have a first opinion about these guys before we get ask them a ton of other questions? You know, my, my first opinion and my encouragement to, to any developer um, would be that we're not going to build the next evolution on our own, right? When I, when I look at you guys, I think of how search could evolve, how we could flip it on its head to where you're not going in and you're, you're typing in house features, you're instead saying, okay, I give uh, Krishna permission to connect to my bank account to study my spending history so that you know how far I want to drive to a grocery store or a bank because of the ones I've selected in my community so that when I move to Austin, you kind of already know my drive time, you know my total cost of living, I enter in my new salary, and through the photos, you know, you, you probably know what kind of house I like if I connect you to my photo screen in my iPhone and you see me taking pictures of granite countertops at the store when I'm shopping for new countertops. So I think, you know, the, the only thing I would say is um, this is going to be a village that builds the evolution of developers that are out there, whether they're in the garage or they're, they're already selling into MLSs or not. It's going to be how do we open those, if you want to throw out the current buzzword, how do we open those APIs so that, Krishna can say, you know what, I can do something really cool with the NREX data. Just let me, let me have some access because Austin really wants to evolve. Kev, tell us something um, more exciting than just drive time. Yeah, sure. Give it some color here. Sure. Give us other applications, other benefits, other reasons. Sure. Well, uh, learning, again, three years in this industry, maybe it's obvious to you, but it wasn't obvious to us. People don't want data, they want information. Um, so the first thing is, you know, I have a sign in my office, NREX, guaranteed satisfaction or double your traffic back. Because people don't <laughs> want traffic. They want to know, <laughs> we're seven minutes from McCarran, right? They want to know what's my second fastest route to the airport. They want information from the data. And what we didn't realize, and now we've realized, is people buy a neighborhood first before you buy a home. So you can do drive time to your office, drive time to your wife's office, drive time to daycare, and it's the Venn diagram overlap of these circles. That's the neighborhood you should buy in. Uh, we didn't know that two years ago. And we found it very popular for reloads. Of the five million homes a year that get sold, one million or so are reloads. It's been very valuable for them. Right? If I moved to Austin, I wouldn't have a clue which neighborhood to buy in. And I might have a friend that says, look in XYZ neighborhood, and I would be channeled into there. Uh, so that's one piece of learning that we've done. The other learning that we've done is that there's a myth that the farther away from the core you move, the more house you can get for your money, but the longer the drive time. Mm -hmm. That's not true based in minutes. Uh, by the way, the, the one trend that you might have heard me say that you'll hear again and again, we as humans are measuring distance differently. We used to measure distance as miles and kilometers, and now almost always it's minutes. Whether you're Starbucks and you want stores within five minutes of people, drive time to the airport, those travel time signs above the highway. And as you look at your systems and platforms, if you're using miles, you're old school. People think minutes. Have your kid or grandkid in the car beside you driving down the airport. How long, Dad, Grandpa, I have to go pee. How long can you wait? Seven miles? <laughs> <laughs> That's not how they talk, right? And Uber helps. So um, we've learned that in many cases you can go further out, get more house for your money, and actually have a shorter drive time in minutes. The other learning that we're finding, and I think I credit to the HAR guys who've done this really well, for those of you who want to check out what they've done, which they understood buy a neighborhood first, is now turning it to a seller's feature. Because for the same reason, you might be further away from the core, and people don't actually would write you off, and you can say, hey, here's my drive time to downtown or the medical district or to Exxon Mobil. If your buyer puts your own specific work address in, it introduces the feature, and it helps sellers get more listings, better listings, because they won't get written off so early. 
And those are just two examples of the learning we've learned in residential real estate that I had no idea. I had no idea at all. The other thing I say that we were learned is that for open house brokers, um, the couple comes in often so smart and smug off of Zillow, Trulia, Realtor, mm -hmm. thinking they know everything. And the broker can say, well, where do you work, sir? Where's your husband, wife work? Let me show you something you might not have known. And it instantly changes the route. Right? What's the old adage in the medical business? Doctors get off their podium when patients get off their knees. And the same thing is here true, which is you know, realtors get off their podium when uh, customers get off their knees. And sometimes the customers think they're so smart. And it just changes the dynamics. And I've got numerous emails. I wish I had more empirical data, not anecdotal data, that say, you helped me win this buying couple. And you didn't even use drive time. But it positioned me as an agent, as a consultant. Not just shut up and give me the keys. I, wa I want to look at these seven houses. Why am I even talking to you as a broker? Just give me the keys. And it instantly changes. And that's very gratifying because at the end of life, you know, we've met a lot of friends. And there's those stories of change where you made someone's day that get me the most. And, that's and it's probably one of the few things that make us as frustrated as, as getting stuck in traffic or being delayed or having an accident. Yeah. Cr Krishna, you said that, that drive time was one of the things that you included, mm -hmm. but then you went to a one further level or an additional level, yeah. and you said you also felt that utilities was important. So why is utilities as important? Give me a, give me a good example. Well, I, I think it's exactly what, uh, what we talked about in the green, you know, green designations. Uh, what uh, Cynthia was talking about is, is she was just saying is that houses, houses are much more efficient, right? I mean, we've become that the R values of the houses you know, just two examples, I'll, I'll give you an example. A house built in 1970 versus a house that's built in 2010, right? You look at the, you look at the bill for a 2,000 square foot house, let's say in New Jersey, where I live, and when you look at those two houses, right, weather is such a huge factor, and all of the other metrics in terms of it, the inefficiency of the 1970 house to the 2,000 square foot on their average monthly bill in the winter time could be $700. $700, guess what that new house is, uh, is gonna be? Because it's so efficient, it's gonna be 200 bucks. Dual zone, super efficient, and if you sat there and said, can you amortize it across it, because a lot of people are in equal payments plans, again, going to this interesting subscription model, you could take a look at two homes that are exactly priced exactly the same, right? But when you, when you work down back to the actual cost, if I sat there and said, you know, we go to these commercials that sit there and say, you know, 15% or more could save you, you know, uh, hundreds of dollars in car insurance, right? But if you could say that to every single home and say, this is the most efficient and it saves me money, right? And you integrate that with the time cost of the drive, not on the drive time, right? But you'll integrate costs into it. It, cha it transforms everything. I mean, how many people would love to actually sit there and go, if I buy this house, it would save me $300 a month. I mean, that's huge, it's transformative, because it then allows you to live what you really wanna do, which is your lifestyle. So are we taking more intelligent decisions, or are we now just getting access to more information that actually makes it more sensitive? Because some of that information may have been available on a third generation fax copy, <laughs> which was photocopied twice before, which was outdated six years ago. But I mean, so some of it might have actually been available, but maybe, you, are you sensitizing the information more? Well, I, I think it's because of the access of open data and big data that, that's available, right? It's because of the fact that we're able to collect all this data, you know, like Interix, right? I mean, I think that what's gone on is that, is that uh, the best analogy that I'd sit there and say is that all of the current systems that are out there, they're data, like I call it data diarrhea, overload of data, right? Just like, bleh, you know, of just putting all the data out there. But what really people want to know is what does it mean to me, right? And I think that because of the fact that all of the data is available, and you put the pieces together, right? I mean, I brought in a rector set just now, and, I, and this is what I ache in the current system of MLSs are, is that it's a bolt-on system that you have to sit there and you have to comply to that system, and you have to have a tool, and you have to have people sit there and take a look at it. When you're taking up the new systems that are out there, right, we burned it to the ground, we're building it up, RISO is one of the ones that we're doing, and building that as APIs, right, and creating a platform to add whatever pieces that you want, and it looks beautiful. I mean, you know, I, it took me, I think it took me like an hour to build this thing, but think about how easy Legos are, right? And that's what's going on with big data, right? The big data is there's more and more pieces, our people are creating those new data sets that are available, and now we can put them together. So when you start to take a look at the combination of all of these companies, it's an amazing search, uh, search, uh, um, search experience, and it answers the one question that we've been always asking, which is, what does it mean to me? Tim, do you th can you see the consumer searching on, on utilities and drive time? 
I can, but I think it, you know, it goes back to, so we keep talking about big content. I avoided the word, by the way. Um, we keep <laughs> talking about big content, right? And we just brought up something that's an important point, and Rob brought it up too and beat us up a little bit. We, we're like just moving into the API era, but it's been around forever, right? So when you look at um, any content company, they probably have publicly available APIs and privately available APIs, right? So we're a wholly unprepared industry for that evolution and what that change will really mean to us when you start thinking about all the, the really cool things these guys are gonna do with not terabytes of data, but petabytes of data and how they're gonna build those. The visualization is what really matters, right? So there's companies out there that, that aren't on this stage like Remind that are building in new visualizations into the uh, the property record data and tying that in with how many families live in a home. So it's not just a home anymore, now it's a home that has two families. And it's not just a home that has two families, it's a home that has two families and they have a kid that's going into kindergarten in about six months. It's not just two families in a home with a kid going into kindergarten, but they have an average income in that household of X. And how cool is it when a broker starts to imagine how to use the things that they build in ways that they haven't thought of yet, that the MLS probably isn't gonna think of, and why I say we're unprepared for that evolution is because our staff, we're not staffed in a way that prepares us for that evolution. There are some MLSs among us that, that have the developers on staff, if I can go back to that, but you don't hire a developer to develop new software. That's all fun and good. You're gonna be hiring developers in the next two to five years to help make sense of how to integrate these systems, not just into the MLS, but into the brokerage ecosystem that you're supposed to serve as well. So. Y we've got a ways to go. We've got. So a I was sort of leading into that question, which you've started answering. If I'm an association and I'm not prepared for these guys today, tomorrow, I, I can't handle what they. How do I become prepared? Wh what would you recommend be the one, two, three steps that I start preparing myself for this <laughs> huge, pedophile, peta amount of data which is going to be coming down? <laughs> right. <laughs> what am I going to do about yeah, it? Yeah. So <laughs> um, you know, number one, don't be scared. They're right here. They're on stage. They'll talk to you. They'll have fun with you. They'll you'll be able to license them. But I think more importantly, and I'll, I'll tie into some of the other themes here about 12 MLSs, right? I don't know if it's 12, I don't know if it's 100, I don't know if it's 200, but what I do think we need to evolve is we need a separation or we need to start thinking about it differently and that we should start thinking about technology MLSs and service MLSs, right? Because I don't think anybody in here would question the fact that eventually we're gonna need a lot of service centers for those 12 MLSs, right? And there are, five, 10 MLSs that, that are prepared for this future. You all know who they are, I don't have to name their names. And we should be looking at the MLSs that are either prepared for it or are preparing for it and asking ourselves if it's okay if some of us become service center MLSs to them because they're gonna be two very different job sets and skill sets that are needed. You're still gonna need the person to answer the phone to talk about how to do a drive time search, but more importantly, you're gonna need the, the larger entity with the skill set to start talking to brokers, CTOs, about how they integrate those features into the brokerage system. Yeah. So do we need to start changing some skill sets in some association teams? We either need to change skill sets or change the way we think about 12 MLSs or whatever it is, right? Uh, we need to start thinking about technology versus service and, and maybe splitting those off because you can't be both. Okay, I'm gonna get to Duke in a second, Kevin. Well, I was just gonna say, uh, one of the strategies we chose, and I think without naming names, the three of three in the audience gave us this feedback, which is don't actually sell stuff to MLSs. It changes hard. License them through your existing platform. So CoreLogic is a, and HomeSpot or a couple other vendors out there have partnered with us. It's just one fewer things to change, and the drive time interface is right inside the platform. Uh, so I'm, I'm glad we did that approach. We may be left money on the table, but in terms of me trying to go to every one of your board meetings and hiring a sales force and increasing my fees, uh, you know, we do a fair bit of business in this industry now with zero <coughs> sales reps because CoreLogic and all of your existing mm -hmm. partners are out there. And it's helped, again, my very first comment when you introduced me, it's not about data. It's about information and insight yeah. from data, buying a neighborhood first, and with partnerships like those companies I mentioned, it's made a lot easier to propagate the, the data. Duke, you're in a little different situation, right? They've got one specific piece of information, really, uh, drive time or utilities, and they're enhancing that, and maybe it wasn't quite available. You said you were analyzing photos, and there must be hundreds and hundreds of fields of new data that you're actually adding to the table, when, did you say 26 million pictures? 26 million photos so far. We're only in seven markets. So if, if you go to the whole country, it's gonna be you know, hundreds of millions or, or probably near a billion photos. So right now, we're only, in only seven markets, we already have 26 million photos. And would I be able to search on that photo data information? 
uh, internally we can. We're still figuring out right ways to make that exposed to both the agents and the, the home buyers. But obviously, internally, we have all that ability now. I kind of, I kind of want to respond a little bit to sure, what Tim was up. saying earlier, because um, I was reflecting on as, as a vendor, you know, as you're saying, the staff that we work with uh, is quite, you know, I don't want to say this is an MLS, but the people that we get connected to, the people that we connect to to actually um, get us set up to help the agent and help the broker use our, our platform, um, you know, typically they're curious about us in the sense of like, are we going to mess up their data? Are we going to do the wrong thing? Are we going to get them in trouble? Are we going to expose liability? They're typically not curious about what we're doing in the sense of how it could help the MLS or how it could help their members. And maybe there's sometimes we do we do talk to like when our when our CEO when Andrew talks to the CEO of the MLS, it's a very different conversation. It's always about like, this is cool, our membership would love this. But by the time we connect with the person to get us the data feed, they're not curious about that. They're curious just about like what are we gonna do with the API or what are we gonna do with the XML feed or the uh, the web feed. Um, and so I think when you're asking for change, you know, maybe the people are there already, maybe they're not. I guess we would love to have as a uh, conversations, you know. At, those, at both levels. I, I, we still have to have the conversation about how to get the data feed set up so our, our customers and the brokers and agents can get their services. But having the other conversation, coming back and saying, hey, look, we have all these photos to tag. We have all these things there. You know, wouldn't that be cool for your entire membership? Wouldn't that be cool if you found a way to put it? Because we are a platform. Like, we're not doing drive time, but we, our, our users absolutely want to be able to search <laughs> by commute and stuff. Um, the uh, total cost of ownership. Yeah, sure. um, they all, they're super curious about it. I don't think our users tend to want to search by it, but they would never actually make a decision without having that information mm -hmm. at some point. Sure. That, they actually would want to search, they want to look at a box that just says, give me five minutes, give me 20 minutes. Um, so, I don't know, that's a little bit of a soapbox, but so it's like, what are, you know, what are some of the boxes that you would be adding on as a result of the photos that would allow me to search now on which I couldn't search before? Sure. So instead of searching on bedroom, bathroom, what else could I search on now? Sure. Um, so actually, today, um, we do call out the actual features themselves. Like I said, I, I called out hardwood floors or different features in the thing. We don't make them hard filters, though, because today, um, we don't want to run the risk of uh, not showing the house that has that feature because the photo wasn't there, right? So we treat them today as soft criteria. Home buyers tell us these five or 10 or 20 things that matter to them as well, and then if the home has those photos, we bump them up. We, we'll, we'll trump them higher in the order. Um, because it's risky, because another house may have that feature they want, but the photo wasn't there, or yeah. they didn't take a good photo of yeah. it. Uh, so because of that, we don't allow people to search hard for, give me only homes with hardwood floors, or give me only homes um, uh, near a particular um, uh, feature or park or recreation. Um, but we definitely take the data, and we try to like rank it. Right? And this is why machine learning for us is beyond photos. Um, what's hard for us today is, uh, we don't have enough data yet to do the machine learning to do personal search. And personal search, you've seen it on Netflix, on LinkedIn, on Google, they've been doing it for years. But on a home search, you see kind of very little bit. And I think, I expect machine learning to produce an explosion of new features like that. Um, and we, the reason we don't have personal search is because for the most part, even with 20, 30, 100 million users on the site, we just know a little bit more than beds, bath, price, maybe property type. Uh, even the 20, 30 other features are all kind of like filters in the, the MLS data. We don't actually know enough about their, their tastes, their behaviors, how their tastes and behaviors change as they do the search. If we had that data, we could then start learning from that and producing a different type of results for them. Uh, and so because we can't get that from the MLS to date, uh, just like we couldn't get the photos, we started at Real Scout to just start collecting that data on our own. And so having that extra 200 today, today we have over 200 extra features that come from the photos. Um, that's 200 pieces of data that we can use for future learning that are beyond beds, bath, and so are you a service for the MLS, or are you a search engine? Are you a competitor to Zillow? Do you, are you a Bolton? Where do you think you fit in? So we compete for time in cases, the use cases, but we don't really feel like we compete with the MLSs. We rely on the MLSs. Um, really, we're you know, that, that the, the service for the broker and agents use with their home buyer, right? If the agent's using the MLS and the home buyer's using you know, Zillow or, or something else, they don't you know, connect. They're all trying to use a different platform. We try to produce a platform they can both share and use. Um, I think we're good friends with, with uh, uh, Zillow and folks. Uh, when an agent gets leads on Zillow, they come into Real Scout, and we can show that these people, once they're using our platform, convert way better. So if you're buying Zillow leads, make them worth more by, by you know, using this experience after you have those leads. Enhancing everything. Chris Knight. Well, so I actually just wanted to add like something practical, Duke, in terms of um, from what I was thinking about ADA compliance, right? And so I think it's a real issue in terms of it, and I think that that by allowing, like I don't know how many members out there, but 
uh, but uh, just by a show of hands, how many members actually put tags uh, off for every single photo that they upload? Is that like one, two, three? Ooh. Right, so yeah, now five, let's six. multiply by that by all of, the, all of the actual photos that are already out there, right? Do you guys want to require it and make a rule to, make to do it so you can be ADA compliant? Or maybe use software like Kiz just to sit there and auto tag it for you, right? And so that I think that there, there's some practical stuff that we can take a look at and it, it addresses issues, right, in, ter in terms of, of those things. Meaning that, you know, taking a photo and you already know it's a kitchen, you can already put that alt tag and sit there and bring that data back into the MLSs and it helps them with compliance, right? I mean, either you're gonna go through some of those other, other things or, you know, using technology to help them because I don't know how many people wanna manually tag, like, what is it, a million photos? <laughs> Uh, out there, but I think that it's important, right? So one of the things I wanted to bring is, is you know, what, you know, we always talk about, you know, uh, our technology being so far out there. I think that there's some practical things that they can take away. And, you know, even just putting that investment, right? It's an investment against hedging your bet against ADA, right? And the thing that we're doing at TLC is that when I talk about costs, right? I think that you've got, you know, you've got a lot of information out there and I think that you wanna know, you know, you really wanna qualify your buyer, right? Exactly, I think that what you said is that you know, we're that, we're that entry, uh, entry platform where, you know, at the end of the day, right, the consumer makes the decision using one final sheet of paper. As me as an agent, you know what the paper that I used at the last moment when I was like, I wanna buy that house? It was the sheet of paper that came from the agent that sent it from the MLS platform. You're still a practicing agent as well, right? So you, yeah. have, you have grassroots experience. Is, is the technology that you guys have, was what I spoke about this morning, it's way out there. It, is it necessary? Is it good? Are we gonna, in, I don't know, 2027 be talking about the year that we should have taken your stuff, used your stuff? H how do we, how do we, how does this group move forward as a whole? How, how do we take a step forward? I don't picture a world where consumers and agents don't use our stuff, but um, they're using it now, and it's just a matter of time before we get yeah. more out there. Um, so he asked how many, um, Christian asked how many folks have their photos tagged today. I would like to ask how many MLS would like to have their photos tagged. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> because if you would, you know, we can help with that. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, I mean. Yeah. So you see yeah. all the photos tagged. Um, Tim, you want to say when do you think that that's going to happen? <laughs> you know, it's interesting because while he was talking about it, I was thinking about uh, somebody, one of the previous sessions where they talk on Facebook and God, can't you just be more like Facebook, right? And I'm thinking tagging photos. And then I started thinking about how do I even tag a photo inside a matrix? Do I tag a photo? Can I tag a photo? <laughs> and, and I wonder how many of you were thinking the same thing, right? So, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it, it, I guess it depends upon, you, you asked, are we gonna look back and wish we had done this in the future, right? The reality is we're gonna do it whether we like it or not, and if we don't do it, it probably leans more towards the evil side of Rob's presentation, if you will or the devil that Greg Robertson threw up today. I'm not sure who the devil was, but good picture. Um, so, so yeah, there, there could be a day that we look back and go, man, I wish we had really paid attention to uh, evolving our platforms and working a little closer with our vendors and you know, how interesting would it be to go back to what you said if you actually sat in an MLS committee or on a board of directors at a, a large, if you can imagine this future of technology MLSs and 12 technology MLSs at Ann Bailey Paints, what if these guys are the board of directors of that with a couple yeah. of realtors, yeah. right? Just to make sure they don't do anything really crazy because that's probably possible too. Um, we, don't, we don't think or evolve that way and we need to start thinking and evolving that way because if we don't, there will be a point in time in the future that we look back and go, so damn. Tough, tough question before I get back to you guys. If great, 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 uh, technology service, customer service perception, image, uh, extent of range of products today was a 10. And let's just say that the room today on average is delivering at five. If you added all three of these services onto your MLS in some shape or form, what would that push you up to? To a 5.1 or would it push you up to a seven or eight yeah. or nine? Where do you think, where, where would we yeah, be? Unfortunately, I gotta say it, it may move you to a 5.1. And the reason I say that is because um, these guys aren't deeply enough integrated and to go back to what one of my own members said, Gary Weiss up here, it's just not a beautiful platform to deliver their software in the way that they wish it was delivered, right? So unfortunately, until the base changes and CoreLogic, if you're here, I love you, but um, Black Knight, everybody else, until we one, start paying them more so they can ramp up their R&D uh, or a new entry comes in and we're all so wowed by what they've developed because they 
had the startup funds to develop it until our base platform is such that it's a simple integration a uh, plug and play if you will even though I hate the word but the second I can take it and make it part of something that's, right, that's you're already, usable, you're already that's implementing wannable. here so five point one with the current platform so the platform tomorrow is all shiny it all works it's great these guys can be plugged and played in what does your five point one change today I think at that point it changes to a 10 because then it becomes oh, okay. what the consumer yeah. wants when they want it, right? Not that adding NREX takes you to a 10 or any one of these takes you to a 10, but it's, it's the, the 500 that are out there. And it's the broker saying, you know what, the way I want to deliver my brokerage platform is X. Um, why, why can't they build their own MLS system? I know that's a little scary, but if you think about the technology versus the service MLSs again, then you think about somebody that's there to help a broker integrate and develop what they want to develop and use the people they want to use. And then when they log into this platform that you're delivering them, the platform is tailored to the user. Mm -hmm. And at that point, you're 10, whether you're using NREX mm -hmm. or some other software, right? So when you start tailing it. A constant struggle we have as an industry, right? We have vendors that come up with nines and tens in product, and we have an industry which is maybe playing in a fours and a fives and a six field. And those two worlds don't yet connect. Well, that's where you need leaders in the industry. And the great news is the people here, I like to come to these conferences and, and your own conference too. And Inman, those are the three conferences I go to this industry because that's where the leaders are. You know, uh, the industry sort of, you know, the 57-year-old third career sort of agent model. But this is where the technology leaderships are. And in all fairness to a few in the room, we started with one simple use case as a property detail listing. After you did your search on beds and baths, then you told your drive time. And then we just listened. And Windermere was the first that said, we've got to do search by drive time. And then I think it was HAR, maybe HomeSpotter, who said, let's have his office, her office, and daycare, and it's a Venn diagram inter, uh, you know, intersection. So that's the third interaction. And then HAR wants to do uh, seller features. Other people want to do morning tours on Saturday where you go to six open houses and which they order the houses based on traffic conditions. So it's just you get into the industry, find the leaders, and listen. So us technology geeks, people don't want technology then per se. They want to solve problems. You know, the whole drill versus the hole model that we mm -hmm. talked about yesterday. Mm -hmm. yesterday yeah. And without people in your audience, it makes it really hard for us because we're where the rubber hits the air, to use a traffic term, and you guys are where the rubber hits the ground. So my feedback to you in the audience, if you have an idea or an implementation, yell. Tell us. We actually want your feedback. It's really hard to develop products and services in a vacuum. And the best ideas we've had for turning our data into information have come from the people in this audience. No, that's great wisdom, great wisdom. We all almost also had that video yesterday, which was the crazy ones are the ones that actually changed the world. In, in many cases, these are the crazy ones, right? These are the guys <laughs> that, that come up with ideas of how can we make the world better? Yeah. How can we change the rules? How can we come up with something? And there's a disconnect between the crazy ones and the ones using it. And the more we communicate with each other, the more we'll find out how we can use your, your brilliance uh, in a current world today that doesn't quite always well, understand it's, it. It's, you guys might not know this, but you've really helped me in another way, helped us. When you hit I allow on your favorite app, as per section 4.2B of the operating system terms and conditions on page 13, you are most likely sending us your anonymous GPS every 15 seconds. Point heading speed, point heading speed. You know, because we don't care that it's Krishna driving down the I-95 at two miles an hour, because it's one of those trillions of data points. And who would have ever thought that would help home buyers buy houses. Yep. Yeah. Yep. What a big jump. Yeah. I would have never guessed, right? Yeah. Uh, Krishna, something to add to that? Well, I mean, I, I think that for the industry, right? I mean, one of the big things is you're absolutely right. I mean, I've been in, in this industry for uh, as a practitioner for 12 years. And then, I mean, it, the, the platform that I mean, TLC is, right, is that I was frustrated in my own market with 23 different MLSs, right? And I deal with clients from New York to, to New Jersey and I have to deal with six MLSs, right? And they're all different systems. So I wanted to create a single platform where I can take all those ODX feeds and just make it simpler for my, myself, right, as for my clients. And I think that, you know, as, as you said, I think that it's listening, right? And we start to see that. When we were originally as a secondary uh, search platform for, uh, with, with CoreLogic in, in Matrix, and then, you know, then they said, wow, this is a beautiful interface, right? So we were working with partners in the industry, like August Partners, and they've really taken our, you know, my geekiness, right? And really put, uh, I, I like the joke that I always sit there and say is that, you know, I've got all these uh, pigtails and I'm in a plaid shirt and I'm that nerdy, you know, girl. And she just came and said, okay, let's, let's put some great makeup and you look fantastic. Because you're, you're not only beautiful, but you're also smart. 
I think that I think that Tim, you were just saying. Let's give him a big kiss, guys. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you, Th thank you. But I think that you know, I think that you know, we see from Bragg Robertson, right? Is that is, is he always sits there and says the biggest frustration is that you know, committee meeting after committee meeting, right? And it's a glacier state. So I think that you know, technology, like it's exactly what you know what they said uh, in, in the crazy ones, right? Is that either you're going to make change happen, or change is going to happen to you. So the question comes down to is where do you want to be, right? Do you want to be the leader or the follower? I think that we're building those things. I think that the that the building blocks are there. And so when when I've listened, right, we we became uh, front end of kind of choice for the MLSs. We're now doing public facing and we're doing mobile. So all of those integrations, but we're working with APIs that open up and added you know different features, right? They said, oh, can you add and integrate DPR? They said, yeah, we'll just add it. I, I added DPR in two weeks. Two weeks. Think about how long it takes to approve uh, a new thing on, on somebody else's platform. Yeah, well, we heard yesterday, nine months. <laughs> right, right. So let's, let's, let's wrap up and give you each a, a minute or two. I'm going to ask you to take your own vendor hat off, if I, if I may, which is, is sometimes tough, and try and put on the, the hat of, of somebody in the audience. Right? So put on a hat of, of uh, one of the association leaders, association directors, maybe uh, elected, maybe appointed, doesn't really matter. Um, give us a takeaway. Duke, maybe you'd like to start. Give us a, a takeaway. What would you like to... Um, suggest or recommend that they uh, think about or do over the course of the next year until next year MLS in Austin, no less. So <laughs> what would they think about or do to keep their association um, uh, uh, ahead of the curve? Yeah. Um, well, I think the more that we can talk to, the more that you can talk to us, us or even any vendor, I think would be helpful. I like what Kevin said around giving us the feedback, sharing the feedback with us. I think, though, on the idea front, you know, there's usually typically good ideas when you talk to enough people. I think sometimes we are, I'll say like, our, our company is small, pretty young, and I'll admit, super geeky. Um, but we tend to focus on problems, not technology, right? It, it's all about not, you know, a data, but, but information. It's not about technology, it's about solutions. And so uh, I think the theme for us is that, you know, there, in our world, there isn't anything, any problem that we don't believe could get better if it's fixed. We just believe that whatever's there can be, can be better. We can fix it. Uh, and I think what we don't have uh, as much insight into would be, um, like, very few, I can't think of anybody in our, in our area that would say or be happy with the way things are, even if they are kind of okay. Uh, and so I think the feedback we're missing is maybe the feedback of, like, for people who do think it's good the way it is, or for people who are afraid of, the, of what's coming, share that feedback with us. Because I think we can get feedback around what cool thing we can build. We can get feedback around what, you know, what ideas can get better around solutions. I think it's hard for us to get feedback around why it's scary or feedback around why you'd rather not see it change or feedback around what's the consequences of the change. Um, our folks just think, oh, it can be better. Let's just go do it. Um, and I think if we had feedback from you around you know, what are the pains and things that you would see trying yeah. to get there that we typically just say, we'll figure that out later. Um, if you could share that with us, we would have a better, you know, like I said, we're already very, um, uh, serious stewards of your data itself, <coughs> I think we can be better partners in the path of change if we knew what you were, uh, if, if there was fear, more details around, you know, what, 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 what is it that you don't like about it? Yeah. Tim, would one of the stumbling blocks be money, the thin margins we heard today? I think it's absolutely a stumbling block, but speaking to money, um, and maybe playing the alternate role if you'll allow me to put the vendor hat on real yeah, quick. Yeah, sure, great hat. <laughs> you know, I, I think I would say to every MLS executive out there that um, do not be afraid of me. Um, I'm not here to steal your data. I'm here to help you. You just don't understand me um, or you think I'm a gimmick or you think I'm a trick or you think I'm a fad because you don't have the capacity on your staff to necessarily understand all the ways in which I can help you. Be brave. Ask me anything that you want because I'm more willing to negotiate than you might think. I'll happily negotiate a consumption-based economics contract if you'll take a chance on my technology. I'll happily talk to the other vendors in your marketplace to talk about how we might incorporate our solution into your entire ecosystem so that it actually works together and it's not so separated and people don't have to go to 10 different places to do the one thing they want. So um, I think just be more willing to have the conversations don't shut the door um, and take us a little more seriously because we want to evolve with you. We don't want to evolve without you, but we will. 
and have the conversation many times not as a, a client-vendor relationship, but more as a kind of a partnership, friend, development, future kind of relationship. Krishna, in closing, a takeaway. What would you, if you were to give these people some advice uh, over and above buying your product, and we get that part, <laughs> but, but, but <laughs> what, what, what should they do to become better leaders at the association at these times of craziness and change and confusion and uncertainty? I mean, I, I think that, um, you know, I, I think the biggest takeaway is that, you know, I think uh, it was uh, Alex Carrillo just saying, you know, what I see in Slack, right? So, like, the first thing that people can do is is create a Slack group, add us as vendors, and, and really start making that feedback, right? And it's actual decisions that we can actually do right now. And I think that we want to hear some of those pain points because, like, we on stage, right, we love to... Like we can build it, right? And if you if you build it and you get enough of, of group, you know groups, right? It's really hard to sit there and say that as you said, you know, we need to get to a certain amount of scale to make it actually worthwhile for us to do the investment in the technology, right? But I think that if you can group some of these together in terms of some of the comments that people were saying, that group, right? That group think and saying, oh, I don't have to go to one MLS at a time to go after my, you know, going after it. And we're, we've done through some of the partners, right? But if we can integrate those things together and, and put those together and they say, you know, hey, you got 12 MLSs, as somebody was saying, is that if you just got one and all, you get to all 12 of them, it really makes sense economically even for us. And then we will we'll put the investment and make that change. But we need to hear that, you know, hear that feedback. So would some of you guys be willing to talk to some of these guys even before you have a contract to have that discussion, to open it up, to see where it could go? Yeah. I, I've been talking for two years and I don't have a contract with you. I know. <laughs> oh. it's, you know, it's just life. Some t to go back to the pennies and cents, I only have so much of a budget. So I not only have to look at them and decide which ones I think are good, because there are a lot that are good, I've got to decide which ones can I afford and deliver. Yep. All right, Kevin, yours to take away. Give us yeah. the wisdom. Well, I, I, I would just say life advice, I tell everybody I meet, play offense, don't play defense. It's more fun to play offense, and I'll give you a specific. I know I really enjoyed your top 20 this morning. There's one that I see for sure, you know, to use the Wayne Gretzky analogy, you'll hear the Canadian voice in me once in a while to go where the puck is going. Besides these top 20, we see something that's clear as day that you might not yet. And just like if I was here five years ago telling you mobile, 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 and that would be important, and you maybe wish you would have acted differently, this trend we see completely. People are measuring distance in minutes, not miles. And there are a number of applications you're going to want on a phone that Uber, like, where's my appraiser? Where's my buyer couple? Just to think you could sit at home and, you know, call your mother or have a shower if you knew where the appraiser was rather than being trapped for 20 minutes or whatever. But to see these people being measured in minutes away, do a quick audit of your systems and technology. And if you're still measuring distances in minutes, you're doing it wrong. This will allow you to go out to your membership and they'll think, wow, you're a real leader, you see the future, because we see it. Today, we have companies coming at us building the Uber of babysitters, the Uber of tow trucks, the Uber of your utility guys. Your applications will be different. I would love to hear them about you, but as a whole, I use that as an example, play offense. It's more fun in life. You guys are under siege. I like Rob's comment the other day, and I <laughs> felt for you. So, but play offense. The best defense is a good offense, and for those of you out there who are playing offense, I'm already sort of talking to you. You're fun to talk to. You're invigorating. You're fun. And it's just a great way to live life. And don't worry about the problems of the past, right? Today is the first day of the rest of our lives. So the overall takeaway, we calibrate our lives by using big data, by using information which we didn't have before, whether it's minutes, whether it's photos, whether it's utility or other pieces. We will change the industry piece by piece. There are many other vendors like these, the crazy ones, that, that want to help us. Let us reach out to them and see if we could do something together to make sure we can take our industry from if we are in 1997 to 2017. Thank you very, very thank much. You. Kevin, thank you. Krista, thank you. Duke, awesome, Tim, thank you very, very much.